Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Does he have confidence in the Honourable Kate Wilkinson as Minister in his government? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes. The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. What, in his opinion, did Kate Wilkinson do wrong that led to her resignation as Labour Minister? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, um, as the member said, she felt it was the honourable thing to do because the Royal Commission's report uh, was effectively so damning on the department that she had responsibility for, and because 29 men lost their lives, she felt uh, that that was the appropriate thing uh, to do. I supported her view in doing that. The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Uh, given the Minister considers she has done no wrong, isn't it correct that in some of the key responsibility, it is some of the key responsibilities of a minister to monitor their department, to demand accountability and to ask the right questions of their department, to check that their department is actually doing its job and to act on appropriate advice, such as the letter I wrote on the 6th of May 2010. And if he does agree that these are key responsibilities, aren't these the very areas where Kate Wilkinson was derelict in her duty? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, I don't believe that accurately characterises. I've seen the letter that the Honourable Member wrote. I've also seen the response. Uh, looking at uh, the response, it's quite clear uh, that the Minister took the correspondence very seriously. Um, she, uh, in the report, actually relied on her official's advice that had come out of the 2009 review. Uh, she spent some time looking at the operational capability. Uh, she also indicated that um, DOL had said that there was no recent change in the pattern of, of mining serious harm notifications that may give cause for concern. Uh, she has acted pretty much on all of the advice that I can see from the Ministry, with the one exception where uh, they did re make a recommendation in relation to small mines. But the reason she declined that, because as the Ministry itself said, there are currently no mines operating with fewer than 20 employees and existing operations already have systems, so the above proposal would have no impact on any current mine operators. The Hon. Damien O'Connor. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister, given the rejection of advice on mine safety matters from the unions, from her department's internal review in 2008, and from my letter... How can he be satisfied that this minister has the level of judgment required to be a minister in his government? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, if, if we want to get into the blame game, uh, let's just start having a look at a few of the facts. For a start off, elect Labour was elected in 1999. Order. 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 A question was asked, and I'm... Uh, and, and a question as to the Prime Minister's confidence in ministers is a, is a fair question, and I think it would be proper to answer it, not to get into the blame game. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, let me, let me reverse the order then, Mr Speaker. So, in relation to the advice that the Minister had, she received the report or advice off the report that Trevor Mallard received in 2008. She followed that revise. The, in the advice, the Department of Labour said there were two issues. One was in relation to small mines with was the highest risk. It said, by the way, I might add, generally the legislative, legislative and regulatory framework was sound. The operational capability of the mines inspectorate was sufficient. Um, and I might add, Mr Speaker, that this was the advice that the Minister acted on. By the way, this was on the back of the report that was received by Trevor Mallard when he was the Minister in October 2008. And this is what Trevor Mallard said when he received this advice, <clears throat> because it came in the form of a press release he put out in October of 2008. And I quote, he said that the legislative and re regulatory framework was essentially sound, and both employer and employee submitters overwhelmingly supported the current legislative framework. They did did not want to return to a more prescriptive regulatory framework. And this comes from a Labour government that in four of the nine years they were in office in the last term cut the amount of spending that went into health and safety. Order. Point of order. 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 A point of order has been called. The Honourable Trevor Mayer. I seek the Leave of the House to table the uh, media statement that the Prime Minister has just quoted from 
which says inter alia the quality of employees' participation in health and safety order, in mines order, leavers, is order, an issue. Order, leavers sought to table that document. Is there any objection? Yes. Oh. There is order, order, order. No order. No order. The House will come to order. Unless the members on my right want an early shower, the House will come to order. Sufficient of that exchange. Uh, members have a right to seek leave and other members have a right to refuse leave. The Honourable Trevor Miller, point I of order. Speaker, I seek leave to table the draft media release uh, of the 22nd of October uh, on which the media release was based. Leave us sought to table. Oh, can we just check for the House? The draft media release was from the Minister's office? No, it was from the department. From the department. Draft, Order. I apologize. The, the Leave us sought to table that document. Is there any objection? Yes. There is objection. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr. Speaker, I seek leave to table the communication plan which indicates the issue in relation to lack of workers' voice. Can the House the, just, this uh, is... the, from the Minister, from the Minister, the Department of Labour, uh, 22nd of October. Leave us sort of table that document. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Uh, the Honourable Damon O'Connor, supplementary question. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. Does the Prime Minister order? I apologise to the member asking the question. I say to the ministers on my right, I must be able to hear the question. I know my hearing is not brilliant, but I've got to be able to hear the question. Thank the Honourable Damon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order. Now, <coughs> the member just received a seat for I'm very grateful to the Attorney General for that offer. <laughs> the Honourable David O'Connor. Mr. Speaker, that minister won't be much better off. Order, the member. Does does now the member will just ask his supplementary question, Mr. please. Mr. Order. Does does the Prime Minister consider the minister's resignation? from one portfolio and keeping her cabinet position on full pay is honourable when there are 29 minors, fathers, sons and breadwinners who are dead because of the incompetence in a department that she had full responsibility for. The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Mr Speaker, I, I think all of this parliament would acknowledge that no resignation of a, of, a, of a minister, whether it would be from one portfolio or from entire cabinet uh, would in any way uh, come anywhere near um, giving the support that those 29 families actually deserve. But let's go back to the Royal Commission. The Royal Commission was quite clear. The primary responsibility for health and safety rested with the company. They utterly failed. The government for 20 years relied on the same form of way, uh, and way of interpreting the law in 1992. And, it, and again, I go back to the press release that Trevor Mallard put out. In that press release, he himself said they do not want to return to a more prescriptive regulatory framework. I make the point as well, Mr Speaker, not only did Labor cut health and safety expenditure in four out of nine years, they also cut the... Order. No order. Order. That's not necessary to answer the question. Supplementary question, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Did the Department of Labor do as it undertook to do to me as a minister to develop in consultation with industry a program of work to further strengthen health and safety management systems at underground mining and employee participation in that and report back by June 2009 and if they didn't why not and if they did why did the minister reject that report? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I might stand corrected, but my understanding is that uh, that minister received the advice um, in some time in 2008, we're not exactly sure whether it's July or September, but received it in 2008. In October of 2008, he put out a press release. He did not respond uh, or do anything uh, in that regard. In fact, it was left unanswered as a minister. Then the incoming minister, Kate Wilkinson, 
got from the department the advice that they would have also presented to that minister had he remained the minister because they made it quite clear in the report that he responded to in 2008 that the primary focus of concern was around small mines. The bottom line is nothing changed and there is no evidence that that member, or if he was the minister, would have had check inspectors or the other claims he's been making. Point of order, the Honourable Chair. Mr Speaker, it was a very specific, and that was, did the Department develop the programme that I quoted from? Did they give it to the Minister, and what did she do with it? He, order, was not order, the prime, order, order, I'm on my feet. I can't judge the accuracy of the Prime Minister's answer, but the Prime Minister did answer by saying he had, could find no evidence. He was unaware of any evidence of that or of any of that information being presented to the Minister. The only information he was aware of being presented to the Minister was the briefing to the incoming Minister that made certain recommendations. Now, I can't judge the answer. That, that is an answer. It seems to be rather contrary to the points the member made in his question, but, but I, can't, uh, I can't judge the accuracy of an answer. That seems a reasonable answer to the question asked. Uh, question number eight, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, 